Hey guys, today I'm going to try and take us from zero to a working game uh, written in Svelte inside of an hour. We'll see if we can do it. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, the game that we're going to be making is called Connect 4, uh, or 4 in a row, or variations thereof, depending on the brand. Uh, the one where you drop kind of colored tokens down into a grid of, of spaces and uh, try and complete four in a row essentially. Um, so we're going to try and create that game uh, for for the web written in Svelte. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look. So to start off, um, I'm going to clone a, uh, a template um, that I use often for my games uh, or any kind of apps that I'm making um, written in Svelte, which is most of them. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to just use this template. Click that. Um, and we'll do uh, we'll do four in a four in a row. Yeah, and we'll just we'll give it a description yet. Okay. Um, so it's creating that repository. I am going to copy that. Um, and then I'm just going to um, uh, get clone. Um, and then I'm just going to paste. Yeah, don't worry about that. It's just a, a get clone. Um, and then I'm going to um, pop into that directory. And we'll open up the uh, a code, the VS code in that folder. There we are. And if you've never seen a uh, Svelte project before, um, this is based off of the the kind of the template that the Svelte maintainers provide. Um, only my version has uh, TypeScript pre-installed and uh, Tailwind CSS pre-installed. Um, and set up kind of ready to go. Um, in the public folder, uh, not much there. There's an index HTML. Um, so it says we'll do four in a row. Um, we'll save that. That's probably the only the only thing we'll need to dig around in there for. Uh, and then most of the stuff is in the source folder. We have um, the main entry point, uh, which is uh, basically just loading in the app.svelte file. Um, and that then um, kind of creates an instance of that and kind of essentially binds it to the, the document body, binds it to the body of the, uh, of the page. Um, and in this case, I'm demonstrating how you can pass in a property as well. Uh, we won't need to do that. Um, and so actually before I get t too far down this road, let's, um, I was just going to create a terminal and we'll npm install that. Um, and then I'll continue on while we're, while it's doing its business down there. Um, so we can look in the package JSON and there's not, a whole lot here again like i said based off the, the kind of the vanilla svelte install um with the you know typescript and tailwind stuff kind of added on um and so that's basically what we see here we see roll up some roll up stuff as well that's the the build tool um that we're using um and we're going to serve it up with the uh, serve cli um that'll run our kind of dev server um as we're working on it and so that appears to be finished so we should be able to uh npm run dev and then go over here and we see it says hello undefined because i took out the world uh, prop that we were passing in uh in main um so now it's it just says hello undefined um so let's go fix that um so this is a svelte component um, at the top, you'll see a script tag. Um, in this case, it's defined as being TypeScript. And the 
any sort of JavaScript or TypeScript in this case that you would normally kind of want as part of your, your logic, your component can just go in here. Um, so we're importing a few other Svelte components um, and this syntax here where export let that that's the exposing a property for your component out to um, the wide world essentially. Um, so that would be a, what was filled in previously. We're no longer passing that in. We don't need it. Um, you can also add a style tag inside your component and that style, those styles inside of that become scoped to this component. Um, it does that automatically. I'm using Tailwind. I'm not likely to be adding custom styles uh, inside the components, but if you wanted to, that's how it goes. Um, and then you've got your main or your, your HTML, your template, whatever else you want inside your component. It could be a single, it might be as simple as just a button. It could be, you know, whatever. And then it can also obviously contain other references to other components, Tailwind CSS here, Mode Switcher, both of which are um, other Svelte components. The Mode Switcher is just over here. It toggles um, back and forth. I just realized that you guys can't see what's there. So I'm going to just drop myself off for a minute. And so that's that's what it's, um, <laughs> that's what you were missing. Not a whole lot. Um, so we're going to just get rid of the paragraph. We'll save that. We'll see that that's just now hello. Well, it's not much of anything. Um, doesn't like that we don't have name. Um, and we're going to just, we'll just change this to, what did we say? Four in a row. And then I'm going to just pop this down to maybe size size five. Um, doesn't need it quite so big. Okay. Um, so the, the app component is typically it's, well, it's the default kind of entry point into an, a new application. I'm going to leave it as that. Um, and I'm going to leave the kind of the title there. Um, and I'm going to create a, uh, kind of a game kind of component, which will hold the, the kind of the game itself. And then inside that we'll, we'll create a few um, other components to kind of hold the various bits and pieces. Uh, all right. So, but before we do that, I'm going to um, just make sure that our styles are fine here. P4 might be a bit much for what we want later. Um, and I'm going to make this uh, flex and flex column. And that's basically just going to do a flex box layout. Um, with a column kind of uh, orientation, uh, which means that the items will be kind of listed top to bottom. And uh, we can see right now that the padding has just kind of come into effect. It's a little bit smaller. Um, and I think that's fine for our purposes now. I am going to create some files, some, some uh, components here. Um, Let's start off with the aforementioned game.svelte file. Um, and so that'll be kind of the root of our game logic, essentially. Um, and then inside that, um, based on kind of what I wanted to kind of create, we're going to have the, the grid, um, which is, uh, you know, where we drop the, the tokens into. And then below that, I want to have a, um, a scoreboard. Um, so what actually what I'll do is I will, um, in addition to making that, I'll do items center and I'll do justify center. And so that, oh, and I'm also going to do each uh, screen. So that should um, move move the bulk of the content into the middle so that I can come back on screen. Um, all right. So let's take a look inside. So we've got game. Uh, and like I said, inside game, I'm going to have the grid. Um, so we'll create, we'll create a grid. Um, and then inside um, the game as well, we're going to have a scoreboard. Um, so there'll be, that's where we're going to display the, the, uh, 
That's not. Um, uh, we'll display this, the the current score. So you can play multiple games in the two different colors. You can win. Uh, inside scoreboard, there'll be the individual score as well. I don't know why I keep just put a, a T in there. Uh, score, sure. Uh, and then inside the grid, so if you can imagine the grid, you kind of when you drop a token in, you're dropping it in column by column. So we kind of want to have a column as a unit of of logic or a kind of a, a component. Um, and so we'll have com columns, and then inside columns, you're going to have the, the tokens you drop in. So I think that should be enough for what we need. Um, so we'll have column.svelte and uh, token.svelte. See how many times I can say the word svelte in this video. Uh, all right, let's see. I think that's what we need. Now, I do have um, a couple of um, couple of files that I have created uh, already. Uh, they're not um, they're not Svelte components. They are simply um, um, they are simply just TypeScript files. Um, and I believe that should do it. Uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, so in addition to the main dot TypeScript, which we've already seen, um, we have. Oh, okay. Uh, there's winning and drop, and what I haven't copied over. My fault um, is um, and I also want to grab those constants, grab it twice, why not? Uh, and <laughs> uh, types. Okay. All right, that's right. Now they're all there. Okay, so we have um, types. And so in types, I've just defined a few TypeScript types. Um, they're mostly just aliases to other things that are fairly, there's not, not a lot of complexity to them. Uh, player ID is just a number. Uh, column is just an array of player IDs, or just an array of numbers um, representing kind of the, the tokens that currently exist in that column. A board is just an array of columns, so a two-dimensional array of numbers. Um, and I have a couple of, of types, point and vector, which are just tuples of numbers. Um, that's Those exist um, in to be used inside winning, and I'll we'll talk about that in, in a minute. That's basically to kind of just calculate whether or not any given token drop essentially has uh, caused a winning state, uh, so that we need a way of detecting that. And so I have a couple of functions in there that, that do some stuff with points and vectors. Um, not probably going to get into that too much um, in this video, but if I have a chance, if there's time, maybe we'll take a look. Uh, and then there's win event, which is just um, a custom event that gets sent up, uh, that could get sent up at some point if we get there, um, to just say, oh, hey, you know, this someone won, this player won, uh, and therefore you know, we need to adjust the score, essentially. Um, and so that's basically all there is. Not much more to it than that. Um, I also have a few constants. Um, I call them constants, although technically they could be config or settings. Um, depending on, you know, what we want to do in the future, we can make these, you know, user changeable. Um, so we have the number of players. So the default two players back and forth. Um, in a standard game of, of four in a row or connect four, we have um, six rows high, seven columns wide. Um, you need four to win, hence four in a row, number to win. Uh, and in this case, I've defined a couple of colors for the, the tokens. Um, that could also be configurable. Um, the number of colors should equal the number of players um, as, as we have now. 
Um, there's also a drop. I'll get into that if we get there. Um, and like I said, winning, there's some stuff around checking um, if we've won. Uh, essentially, it, it exposes and exports a, a check win function, um, which will allow us to, to check to see if we've won the game later. So right now, we have nothing in game. App uh, has it's not importing game, so let's import game. So this is the, this is the Svelte part, I guess. Um, so we're going to import, uh, what do they say, game? And we'll just add that right here. And I believe that's all we need. Now I save this. Nothing is going to, nothing is going to happen um, because nothing is in game. Game is empty. So we need to fix that. So we need to. Um, let's see, take a look for the game. So game is going to, as I mentioned before, we're going to import oops, uh, the grid and we're going to import the scoreboard. Um, yes, yes, I believe. That is what we're going to do. And then we will just uh, grid. Yeah. Uh, grid and then scoreboard. So one of the things that we're going to need to do with scoreboard uh, at this level, we're going to keep track of the, the, uh, the game score. Um, so we're going to have let uh, scores uh, equal... Um, there we go. Let's scores. And then we're going to start off the, the game with zero, zero, which makes, makes sense. Uh, and then we're going to have the scoreboard, uh, and then we're going to pass the scores in and in Svelte when you have a prop and a variable with the same name. So if I were going to do scores equal scores, uh, in curly brackets, and I'll show you that syntax later. Um, you can do a shorthand syntax where you just kind of put the variable in curly brackets and the name of the prop will be um, inferred from from that. Now it's going to complain because scoreboard doesn't take a prop right now. It doesn't take anything because it's an empty file. Um, so we will have to define those two things as well. Um, so let's go into scoreboard and uh, Create now scoreboard is going to import score, um, and then we're going to loop through um, uh, using the each syntax. So uh, Svelte has its own kind of template mechanism, and like um, I haven't mentioned it before, but Svelte is is a compiled language. Um, so instead of having it you know, this runtime library that gets loaded in the browser, Svelte runs at compile time and essentially builds your Svelte components into just plain vanilla JavaScript files. Uh, there is a light runtime. There's a few functions that it, it uses to kind of manipulate the DOM and, and stuff like, but it's very, they're very lightweight and they're just kind of convenience um, functions to kind of prevent writing the same code over and over again, it kind of reduces the robosity. Um, so in this case, um, we're gonna do an each loop. We're not, we don't have anything to loop over yet. So the other thing we need to do is as I alluded to before, export let uh, provides a way to import props. So we have uh, the scores um, and the scores is uh, just an array of numbers. Um, And for each uh, scores as score, we'll say, then we will pass in uh, the score and we'll do the same thing again. We'll just 
do a score. Um, we'll pass it in to to the score uh, component, which we haven't defined yet. Um, the other thing that we're going to do, though, in addition to the score, it's also worth knowing which index we're on or which player kind of. So the, the, the scores are defined as just kind of an array of numbers where kind of each player has a score in that array. Um, so one of the things you can also do in the each loop in uh, Svelte is in addition to the kind of the value in the iteration, you can also define uh, an index uh, variable as well. So in this case, I, um, and so here I will do player uh, equals I. Um, so that's just the player ID, uh, essentially. But of course, the score doesn't take either of those right now. So we still won't see anything once we uh, save that. And it'll be an error because it's not right. But as you can see now, uh, the game doesn't have an error because now scoreboard exists and scoreboard takes scores. So that's that's fine. Um, so we'll go back here and we will fill in the gaps as we go down the stack of components, essentially. Um, so there's no, this is a leaf component, so there's no imports here where nothing, nothing's getting included. Um, but we will uh, export those, um, what did we say? There was score, uh, which was which was what? A uh, number. And technically export let player, which was technically a player ID. Um, and so we can kind of import that from types. Don't have to, it's also just a number, but kind of if we're going to create the types, we might as well use them. Um, right. Okay. Um, yes, I think that is good. So one of the things we'll need to do, ah, so, okay. So here, is another feature of Svelte, which is uh, very powerful and also a little bit magical. Um, and that's the uh, reactive statements or reactive assignments, reactive blocks, um, call it what you will, uh, the dollar colon <laughs> syntax. Um, it's a label, essentially. It's valid JavaScript syntax, technically. Um, but in this case, I'm going to, um, I want to, for the score, I want to know the color of, of that player um, to, to use as the background. And so I am going to uh, put color equals, uh, what have we got here? Oh yes, colors. I defined colors uh, and now colors has been imported from constants. Um, and I'm going to kind of reference uh, the player and then, so that'll now mean that anytime player changes, which it's not likely, but if it were to change um, for this component instance, then color will also be updated to the corresponding color. Um, technically, this probably doesn't need to be reactive, but it's it's good because in other places we will want them to be reactive. Um, and then we're going to just do uh, a div because everything's everything's a div, uh, and obviously with Tailwind everything's also a class. Um, and then inside this, we're just going to write the score. Yeah, I think that's all that we need in there. Um, and then what are we going to do here? We're going to, so this is going to be, um, uh, we didn't, okay. We didn't define one thing I'll do is go back to scoreboard here. Right. So we're just looping through the scores, but we don't actually have a div to contain our scores, uh, which we which we probably should probably should have. Um, so I'm just gonna take that down here, and we are going to have um, nothing fancy. We're just gonna make sure that because we got a parent flexbox situation, we're gonna get rid of. We're going to get the full width of the, the page again, uh, or the container, and then we're going to do flex. So we're going to have lay things out in kind of flex box order. Um, okay, and 
since score has not been um, saved yet, we have, I'm going to make, uh, we're going to have the text, make it extra large. Um, add some padding. Okay, so there's the numbers, zero, zero, that's a start. Uh, we don't have the background colors though. We have those colors. You can see here it's grayed out. It's not being referenced. Um, so let's fix that. Let's let's find a way of referencing it. And so one of the new features actually in Svelte is being able to kind of access style. You can always do this with classes, but kind of access style kind of in a with a special syntax to kind of define variables that you can pass in as styles. Um, so in this case, um, I'm just going to, oh, uh, um, and then set that to color. And so, ah, yeah. Okay. So we have our black or dark gray and crimson. Um, and that is, uh, that's the start. There's our scoreboard. Um, and so we don't really... And so when the scores change, uh, then theoretically we can update the scores and we'll come back to that once we have something to update them with. Uh, so now we're in the grid. So this is where things get pretty interesting. Um, <clears throat> so let's start off with the script tag as per usual. Let's see, remind myself of where we, where we are here. Um, Okay, so as usual, there's going to be a div with a class <laughs> uh, or uh, no, many, many classes in all likelihood. All right. And again, um, because this is a child of the, the column, we're going to put a full width on here. Um, we will also flex ourselves. Um, So each of the columns, um, we're not going to get the, we're not going to be too fancy with the grid. We're going to have the columns essentially have kind of borders on the sides of them. Um, and so I'm going to create a left border of the grid and then each of the columns will just do right borders. Um, that's, that's the, there are, there are different ways to do that. Um, this is one of them. Uh, and I'll just do, so we also, we're using dark mode, so I'll do border black. Um, but if we're in dark mode, as we currently are viewing now, then I will put the borders to be white. Okay. Now we won't see any borders or anything at all because there's no content inside this div is flat. Um, so we will need to add something inside of it. Um, and we're going to need to add some, some code here as well. So we're going to import a couple of things. We're going to import the column. Good. And, um, oh yeah. So we, at some point we're going to want to send, this is where we're going to keep track of the game state essentially in this grid. So, uh, when you win a game, we're going to want to notify the, the kind of the parent game um, so they can adjust the score. So we're going to want to import a, um, a function from Svelte library itself. Um, and this is the create uh, event dispatcher. Um, and the event dispatcher does exactly what it sounds like. It allows us to create uh, a function which will let us send events. Um, so I usually just call it dispatch and we'll run that function. Um, and now later we'll use that. We won't need it right yet. Um, and so we'll, but we will kind of create our, our game state. So we're going to have a board, um, grid board. Uh, I call it grid in the component, but board as, um, as the type. And so, uh, we're going to have a, a board. Um, this isn't a prop. It's just local state, essentially local context. Likewise, um, turn 
and that's going to be a player ID. And mm, <clears throat> they're going to have the columns in here as well. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I want to initialize the board to an empty game board. Um, and so one thing I found was uh, I'm just going to create a function uh, which will essentially um, return uh, the array as um, seven columns. There are more elegant ways of doing this. This is probably the simplest and most easy to understand. It's just going to initialize the 2D kind of array, sparse, empty 2D array. Um, and, uh, and then we're going to set the board, um, to, to that. Okay. So, uh, I think now we will be able to inside the grid we're going to loop through the columns. Um, so let us do that with an each, um, so each board, that's where the syntax kind of falls apart. Um, so for each entry in board, which is a column essentially, um, then we are going to render a column. And since we're calling this column, we might as well call the, um, the prop column as well, because why not? Um, so for each of the columns in board, we'll just render a column. Um, how are it going to be? Again, still don't see anything when I save because flat, nothing in nothing in column. Um, well, we'll get to that now. All right. So we have a uh, need to import token. And uh, we're going to export let uh, column, and it is a column type. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> I remember this. There is a column type that is not my column type. There we go. Um, export. Um, Okay, so for in for a column, um, what do we need? Ah, uh, yes. So when we pass in a column, a column could just be an empty array, could have nothing in it. Um, but we want to render um, up to the number of rows, up to which is the height of each column. We want to render something to kind of hold the places, even for empty ones. Um, we want to kind of render out empty, empty placeholders, uh, even if there's no token inside inside the column. So what I'm going to do is create another reactive statement, and I'm going to call it a full column, and it is going to be. Um, this is so I'm going to create an array. I already have an array, but I'm going to create a new array. <laughs> And this is where things get a little bit kind of weird is I'm going to take the column, um, spread it out into an object. And this is just JavaScript spread operator. Um, so all the numerical indexes in that, so it might be none or it could be up to number of rows, which would be six. Um, but I'm going to set the length of the, um, so the length of this array or this object, it's going to give it a length property of rows and then array from, we'll take something that's array like, which is an object with a length property essentially, and turn it into a proper array um, where everything at the end will be undefined. So that's what we're basically working with here. So now we have a full, uh, an array that will always have six or well rows items in it. Um, 
and the end of the array will always be undefined. Could be the whole thing. So um, I think that's probably all we need as logic. Um, for now, we will, as always, create a div with some classes. Um, and as seems to be the theme, we will loop through full column um, and uh, as a token. And we will then render token with token. <laughs> um, notice, a, notice a pattern happening here. Um, I certainly have. Okay, token isn't defined, so that's going to freak out a little bit once we get there. Um, until we figure, until we fill that out, essentially. Um, I set grid to be flex, didn't I? Yes, I did. So that means that I'm going to need, I want flex grow. Is that what I want? Yeah. Um, but then I also want, um, well, well, we'll start from there. Um, okay, so still nothing vis visible happening over on the side. Uh, grid is now happy because column now accepts column property. So now we get down to token, which is, I think, our last uh, score. Uh, no, what am I doing? Script. Okay. And now we, again, are at the uh, leaf component, so nothing to import. Uh, but we are going to export let that token. Um, and it's a player ID, which is essentially a number. So we want to basically fill it up with ones and zeros at this point, zero for the first player, one for the second player, um, or undefined. Um, so this token should could actually be undefined as well. So it's going to complain because um, we're not using it and it's exported and we're not using it anywhere. Um, and it does not like that. So we will find, um, actually, we're going to need, probably don't need it just yet. Um, I'll, I'll add. So as usual, div with class uh, only in this case, I don't think we actually need anything inside of it because uh, the div itself is going to be our content. It's going to be styled as a circle. Um, so we'll do um, rounded full. Um, so we're going to do a bit of a an aspect ratio hack. We're going to set the height to, to zero, and then we're going to set the padding top equal to 100%. Um, and that's basically just saying make the padding, because the 100% the, the of the padding, it's it's relative to the width of the component, so it, it, it works to say I want my height, my padding top essentially, to be... 100% of my width, um, which in this case makes it square. Um, but where I'm rounding the corners fully, uh, we end up with a circle. So that's what we want, circles. Um, the, the token, so you drop down. Um, and um, I'm also going to just set relative for later. Um, oh, we want the full width of the container that it's in. So whatever that is, um, we want it to be that. And then as well, we're going to do the, um, actually, you know what we're going to want? We're going to want a, a situation where, um, mm -hmm. 
we're going to do if we need an if um, so another uh, svelte template control flow construct um, so in this case we want to just check if token um, is not equal to null which also means it's not equal to undefined um, if that's the case then we will um, render this this token. Uh, otherwise, we are going to uh, else we want to render basically an empty an empty space, but we need it to take up actual space, like I said before. Um, so we're going to do that the same hack with the height. We don't need it to be rounded because we're not going to see it. It's just going to be transparent space, uh, but we do want the width full. This looks this looks fine, um, and then this one to get the color. Ah, we need the color, so we need to do that same thing that we did with the score. In fact, why not just grab um, grab this? We're gonna then need to import it in the, the colors, but we'll grab that in a second. Um, it's not player. We want token. colors so we'll just say yeah grab our colors but man it does not <laughs> does not format this super well does it um, okay okay so now look when I saved it we now have <laughs> empty space with a border at the, the far left um, that's that's something um, so that means that our we need to add the border to our columns, um, which I I failed to to do, um, but we we can in a second. Um, I will add here. Actually, why not? I'll grab it from score as well. Uh, the style background color color, um, because we want the same effect here okay again there's nothing there we can't see it so uh, what we're gonna need to do is go back up to column and one of the things um, that we're going to do when we click on the column is that's where when you click on a column we'll have that be the trigger for uh, you know you saying I want to add a something to this column um, and so outside of the class this the div is the column essentially um, and so we're going to do on click but instead of actually handling it um, we're going to just put on click like this and what that means or what that tells felt is like okay if I see that on a on a Dom element I'm gonna basically surface that as the click handler for the component itself um, so I don't have to define a, an event dispatcher and then re kind of dispatch it, handle it here, dispatch it up, um, on click, just basically like putting it here without a handler means that uh, in the grids context, uh, column now defines a, in fact, you can see I type O on click comes up um, and uh, I can handle the click on the column itself. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna handle it here. Um, I'm gonna create um, I don't have a function created, but I'll just handle click. Um, and what I'm going to want, um, function handle click. <clears throat> I'm going to want the, um, to know which column you were, it was clicked. So the index, the which is a number. Um, so that information isn't coming up directly from the click from below, but what I can do is, like I said earlier, I can index this iter uh, this each loop, and I can add that into the handler here, make this an anonymous function, and then invoke it with the I. Then the index and Svelte handles that fairly well. It, it, it'll, 
it does the right thing there. Um, okay, so that's that's good. Um, and so this will be what our logic for what we do when when you click on the column. Um, and so what we want to do is for um, the board, we want to index, take the index. So this is the column. Uh, we want to reference the index in the, in the board and we want, it's an array. So we want to push turn. <clears throat> and what we want to do, uh, actually this turn, we, this is local state. We want to define st the game starts off player one, we'll say, Again, that could be an extension. You change that. You do something different. Um, random player starts or whatever. But right now, we'll start with player one. Um, player one starts. And um, so when you click on it, it basically just says on that column, I'm going to push the current player's turn, whoever's turn it is, push that player ID onto that array. Um, and then... <clears throat> We do a little bit of svelte magic because we're mutating in the array and not kind of resetting it. Svelte listens for kind of changes to um, or checks for, again, it does it at compile time. It says, okay, yeah, this variable has been reassigned to, um, and therefore I'll update all of the places where it's being used. Um, since I'm mutating it above, and not reassigning it, uh, I'll do this just to kind of trigger that. Um, and then I'm going to need to change turn. Um, because it'll no longer be uh, my turn or player one's turn. Turn uh, plus one, and then um, modulus the number of players. Yeah, that should that should do the trick. Uh, okay. So oh, we need and we still need to. And our, our columns are still a little. Um, Empty. Well, not empty, just they don't have borders. So let's add some borders. Um, border right. And um, where did my grid here? What did I have? We'll do these two. Um, Okay, so now, there we go. There we've got, we're all set. Everything's good. Uh, in fact, ah, <laughs> so that's not what we want. Uh, we want them coming up from the bottom. And actually, that's fairly easy to do uh, because this, um, we can just say, I want this to be flex and I want this to be uh, flex, not flex, flex, uh, call, uh, reverse. And bingo. Okay. So now we've got something working. Um, so one thing we can do that I usually like to add here um, is cursor pointer. Um, right, let the, let the person know they can click on it. Um, and that's, I mean, that's basically it. Um, well, sorry, that's not it. It right now it won't check if you win, so you can just keep going as many in a row as you as you like. So let's let's deal with that then. Um, so let's get to the grid where we learn who. Um, so in this handle click, this is where things kind of happen. Um, so we'll do if um, we're gonna do a couple a couple check on a couple of things. First of all, we don't want to keep adding to a column when the column is no longer, um, or when it's full. So if um, uh, 
board if so if the column in question that was cl just clicked on dot length not no I, length um is equal to um what is it rows then we will just return we'll do nothing um Sure. And then, okay, here we're going to update the board. And then we need to check here if check win. And that's in that winnings file that I created that I briefly should talk about earlier. Um, we'll pass in the board, uh, the board, and we'll pass in the column that was just um, clicked on. And so what it's going to do is take the because it knows basically the last token you just dropped because it, you know, it's the index you're passing it and it'll be the, uh, you're passing in the board. So it's going to be the, the last one in that necessarily the last one in that index in that, in that column. And it's going to essentially just kind of check, you know, vertically and horizontally and at the diagonals, whether or not there's four in a row or number to win in a row. Um, and if you do win, then we want to dispatch a win event um, and we're going to say it was player turn that was the that's whose player it was that's whose turn it was um, and then that's it that's probably all we need and then we'll just take this up and if it's if you haven't won then change players and no, ah, uh, hmm. it seems to happen there. I'm not sure entirely why. Um, okay, so let's let's see. If I click here, this should increment to one. Ah, no, it shouldn't. Nothing happened, right? Yeah, except for skip to turn. Okay, so <laughs> we haven't handled that win event. That's that's why that didn't happen. Um, so we need to go up to game and on win. We need to handle the win. Uh, of course, handle win doesn't exist, so we need to create handle win. Uh, nothing. Oh, it is, yes, it is a, there's going to be an event that comes into that. It's the uh, win event from types. And so the player that won the, 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 the current turn at the time of winning um, is passed up in that event. Um, and so we want to increment the score. Uh, so we have scores. Um, and we want the event dot detail, which is where the custom data is, player. And we want to increment that by one. And like before, since we mutated, uh, I will do scores equals scores. And oh, so the other thing that we want to do when we win at the grid level, because I noticed it didn't happen there. So we will dispatch the win event, but we also want to set board equal to a new empty board because the game's over. Okay, let's try this. Okay, we'll do the classic and then bam. All right. See? Number 1 empty empty board. Now that is basically all that I really set out to do. Um 
I do have where's token. I do have a bit of um, niceness that we can add to um, the tokens to make them look a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to just add a BG gradient um, to bottom right. Um, and then from, and it's, this is all new in one of the later versions of Tailwinds. If you've not used Tailwind in a while, um, it's all just in time now and it's, it is all quite powerful. Uh, RGB, a RGB, a, um, and then I'm going to do white, um, uh, low alpha. And so you can pass in custom colors at this point um, in the square brackets. And so it's kind of, again, dynamic tailwind. Um, and I believe that's all I need for that. But what I do need to do is create another div inside of that div. Um, And inside here, I put relative on the parent. To, I did not. Yes, I did. Uh, we're going to do inset Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Inset zero. Absolute. Uh, rounded full. Um. Scale I think I do a custom zero point seven. I think that looked right. BG gradient to bottom right again. And then from Again, um, this time RGBA, and this time it's going to be from black, slightly transparent. And let's save that. Okay, and so the, the end of result of that is hopefully tokens that look slightly more like tokens. It's subtle, but it makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that's great. And so the, at this point, that's that's basically all that I'm going to do. Um, except there is one more thing. Uh, you did ask about, well, you didn't ask, but I, I did mention drop. Um, and what is drop? Uh, drop is actually a custom Svelte transition. So Svelte has some basic animations and transitions kind of available as part of the runtime. Um, and what that essentially means is you can say, oh, okay, when this element is being added to the DOM or it's being removed from the DOM or it's moving around, apply these transitions and they're kind of just built in animations and they kind of, they just work well. They kind of, <clears throat> everything gets mapped into kind of CSS trans, you know, transitions and, and it's kind of makes it quite smooth. Um, and it makes doing some slightly, I say fancy, but just some nice kind of motion transitions, fairly trivial. Um, drop is actually a modification that I made of fly, uh, which is one of the available ones, but fly takes a, a kind of a, a delta or a, a kind of a, a distance in pixels. And I wanted it to be in percentage of the height of or size of the element. Um, and we'll see why in a second. So we have drop, and so what we'll do is inside token, we we'll make some changes here. So one of the things we're going to need to do to token is in column. Um, like in many other places, we're going to need the index, and we're going to have to pass in the position of the token, because I want to know how high up the token is. Um, 
in the column. And right now I don't know that. I just know which color the token is. And so we're going to export let, uh, what did I call it? Pause position. Um, number and I'm going to also then want to calculate distance. So this is how, based on how high it is in the column, what's the distance so that I I'm dropping it just above the column. So the higher up it is, the, the shorter distance it drops essentially. Um, and so I'm going to take the number of rows, and I'm going to not equal, subtract um, the position. And then I'm going to multiply that by um, minus 100. This is up minus. I could have written drop, so I make that a positive number, but I didn't. Um, so 100% of the height based on every row that it isn't at the top, essentially. <laughs> um, if that makes sense. And then what I want to do is I want to add that. Um, I'm going to need to reference drop. So I'm going to need to import uh, not what I wanted. Um, import from drop okay and then I want to use it on this and it's just a simple matter of being going in colon if I wanted it to be in and out like bi-directional transition I can just do transition colon but if I want it just to be on the in transition which is all I want it to be on um, then we'll do in drop um, and then I pass it in a an object where I can set the uh, duration 300 milliseconds. I can set a delay of 250 milliseconds, and then I can set the Y of uh, distance. And I think all the other defaults are good, and that builds. And moment of truth, bam, bam, <laughs> bounce drop. <laughs> um, and that's it. That is now it. There are other things you could do. You could, when you win, you could present, sorry, when you win, you could present a message that says, hey, you won, play again, question mark, button, whatever. You could do that. You could, um, like I said, you could allow configuration of the number of players or the colors or whatever. Lots of things we could do. Um, but this gets the point across. Very simple, very basic, fun. Um, play with your kids. Play with your friends. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate, appreciate your time. Thanks again.